Oh, flash went right by it. Another, another bullet. That's that's really pretty. Oh, that's cool. So this is what's known as a bluing bolet. These do not have psilocybin in them, although they do bruise blue. You watch, it's a, what's happening is there's a chemical in there. When I run my hand across it, my thumb across it, I'll expose it to oxygen and then it oxidizes. Look at that, it turns blue almost immediately. See that? <laughs> So cool. Bluing bolets are a few of the bolets that you should not eat. Most bolets, sponge mushrooms, you can see the hymenium layer underneath the gill here. There's no gills, it's all spongy. I'll take that, I'll break it. See, it'll blue just an exposure to. sun-dried ones the most. Although these have been sun-dried and then they got wet. Are they beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. Look Alright, it's pouring rain, but look what I found in here. Wow! A whole bunch of them. They're all over the place in here. This has got to be one of the prettiest mushrooms I've seen in a while. Look at that. Wow. What an awesome mushroom. I don't even really see where some large animals going through there. I'm thinking the bear up here because there's a lot of a lot of raspberries. That this is broken off. Look at that break right there. Oh wow. Oh, these are beautiful. Look at this. Oh these are Amanita muscara famosa. These are extremely potent. They contain psychotropic chemicals, namely muscamol and um oh crap, I forgot the oh uh, ibotenic acid. And when you consume this your body metabolizes the ibotenic acid and converts it to more mus m muscimol. Muscimol, muscimol. Now amanitas are in a genus of mushrooms that contain some extremely toxic individuals so I wouldn't advise going out and just eating these. Although in Japan they have a festival where they where they go out and they collect them and then they they soak them in a salted brine. Both ibotenic acid and muscimol are polar molecules, meaning that they're water soluble. Water is a polar molecule. So when you soak these things in water, especially salted brine, it leaches out the psychotrophic compounds and makes these safe to eat. And they're really tasty when prepared properly. You can identify them by their 
bits, remnants of the universal veil. That's what this is up here. Sticks to this and causes the spots. This is a large bolette that's gone by. Oh wow, and it's a bluing. It's another bluing bolette. They're really cool. Most of the psychotrophic compounds are in the cap. Very few in the stipe or the stalk. Headed in to check the trail camera that we left up here about a, about a month ago, right, Lady Kay? More or less. Trying to turn around in here. Nice bear tracks here. We're gonna cast them. It's just a little hint of the claw. Basically, we're on a bear trail. Yep. With these uh, 
five foot tall plants all around us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does make you think, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the bear could hide in you really easily. I mean, last time I was here, I startled a deer, you know. <laughs> no, it's lucky for us that bear aren't out to get right. people or it, it, they, you wouldn't make it back because they'd hide in these bushes and you'd never know it. They'd pounce on you. But Oh, yeah, that's fresh bear poop. I'm betting we've got bear on the trail camera. See, right now they're eating a lot of berries because the berries are out and probably mushrooms. Looks like a person poop, doesn't it? Uh, or, wait for it, uh, Sasquatch! No! Look, there's no. more over here. Oh, it kind of has a, look, you can see the berries. That's beautiful scat. You can see the berry pits in it. We could bring that in and submit it to Dr. Todd for testing. So he can determine it's a... Uh... It's a bear. That it's a bear. Yeah. <laughs> or, or we could string it out into a big long string and coat it with varnish and claim that it's a Sasquatch scat. Look, there's some over here. There's another piece over there by your toe. Oh, great. There's probably about two feet of uh, uh, of scat here. Nasty. Yeah, there's another part. Wow, the vegetation out here is really tall. I know. <laughs> Look how puppies. Look how puppies. The water. Look how cool that that cedar tree is. I know. It's like a fairies live there. I think fairies do live there. There's two. Yeah. Two beautiful ancient cedar trees. One of their brethren has fallen to his demise over there, but then they're supporting a whole island of and what's interesting is the trees that they're supporting are not cedar, they're fir. Yeah. They're like helping a different species of tree. Right there. Well, they're helping them too because they're ready to fall over those other ones, and probably their roots are helping hold them down. See that? Yeah, well, they're definitely working together there. Are you in trouble yet, Blue? Do you need to be rescued yet? What are you doing, buddy? He's exploring. He probably wants to be with me. It's so muddy. Good job, Blue. No, he's doing really well today on his own. Hey, buddy. Hey. How you doing? Good job. This is really something. This tree, this cedar tree, fell over, like in its root structure was exposed, fell over, and yet still managed to produce like a mini tree off one of its branch nodes. Okay, so what I mean by a throwing stick is you can either construct, you know, you go cut a stick out. Like these were would be like the primitive, before a boomerang was a boomerang. Like somebody grabs a stick, right? So think about this. This will. Let's say I had a rabbit over there. See? It's spinning, so it's got this kill radius. You could also have done it sideways. You could even probably take out a deer with that if you was close enough to one. Yep. Look at that. Wow, it was really... Been there a while, huh? The moose graveyard. Yeah, well, at least one moose died in here. I'm very excited. The camera still got a battery in it. I think it said it had a thousand events, although like that seems like a lot. Good boy. Well, I'll tell you what, they are big animals. This is almost like a ready-made throwing stick. And that would be perfect. They make a perfect primitive weapon. It's like a boomerang without the, without any of their aerodynamics. Yeah, these are beautiful. They're like gelatinous on the tops. Yeah. And 
and a, of an irregular. Let me see, there's some more of them over here. Oh, I'm telling you, the forest is just carpeted in mushrooms, which is an excellent, uh, makes an excellent point that the forest is alive. Like this mycelium is everywhere is in here because now you can see it manifested in the fruiting bodies. You've look, got to get footage of this crazy puppy. Look what I just found right here. Look at this. Oh, wow, cool. Isn't that awesome? A femur. Or... Oh, and there's another one up there. Oh wow, this is where that moose is then, right? He must have died. Remember the, there was supposed to have been more parts? Yeah. Yeah, that's really something. There's got to be like a pelvis in here. There should be a skull. Oh. <laughs> Me taking photos of the trail camera. Look at the mushrooms. I know. How little is oh, they're everywhere in here. And who was right again, babe? Who was right? Uh, well, you're usually right. Look at this. <laughs> Did you do that? No, I didn't. But look, this this one was picked too. Pre-picked. I think the squirrels are uh, the squirrels will harvest mushrooms. Yeah. They're definitely mm -hmm. these brown ones are rushulas. Pretty much everything that you see here is edible. Oh, there's the uh, moose scapular. The last time we were up. Leftover from a Sasquatch kill. Look, I can't even. I can't even move over here. We got chanterelles. Little baby chanterelles. These are perfect. Super easy to identify. Super safe. Chanterelles as a whole. Chanterelles are the ones that have the. Uh, they kind of look like a vase, a vase. They have what's known as decurrent gills. You can see the gills. Kind of go down the stipe a little bit. And these ones will have kind of a egg yolk outside and a white fleshy interior that's fibrous. Yeah, I'll break this one. Break this one open and show you guys. You can see it's white inside and it's got a very fibrous I mean, you can tear it apart, it's not super tough, but it's a fibrous stipe stalk. It's hidden right, right in that little nook. Oh yeah, I see it. Isn't that awesome? That's a really nice one. Mushrooms do not... Well, they, you know, they say they don't need light, but they light is useful for them for certain, certain things. Alright, Lady K, who is not a prop. I surely am a prop. <laughs> Aren't they pretty, huh? You've seen oh, these yeah. before. Yeah. The Latin is Monotropa uniflora. And the common name is, I think, Indian pipe. It's a parasitic plant, not a fungus. Just lacks chlorophyll. They're, they're ghostly beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. They really are pretty. There's some medicinal use for them, but offhand, I can't remember what it is. I forgot. Looking to see some old Amanitas that grew and then dissolved after doing their business. And look at this one. It's even started, well, I guess it's fungus, but it's it still has got a mycelius, mycelium. Look at that. Oh. There's a whole little battlefield going on right there.